All right, everybody. Welcome to the uh, live stream here. Um, we are just gonna kind of hang out here for a minute. Just let everybody uh, kind of filter in here. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, get some people in here. So, but welcome to the uh, welcome to the live stream and. Um, Today we're going to be talking about um, the HP print and cut barcode workflow today. So we will let some people join in here. Uh, if uh, while we're waiting for some people to join in, if uh, if you don't mind, uh, if we do this uh, every Wednesday uh, at two o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, what we do is uh, we just talk Flexi. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do is uh, while everybody's kind of jumping in here, maybe getting a few people in, um, wanted to let you guys know if you want to see these videos, you want to get notified that we're going live, uh, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and then uh, hit that notification bell uh, on there as well. That way you get a notification letting you know that we've gone live. So hit that subscribe button and then uh, hit that notification bell as well. Um, we offer a lot of different content on our YouTube channel as well. It's not just this live stream every Wednesday. Uh, we offer webinars and all kinds of different content on our website. Uh, we're posting a lot of different things on here. Uh, we do en route webinars, Flexi webinars. We do other trainings and any other kind of videos that we post on our YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and make sure and check those out. Um, and if you get subscribed, it'll, it'll allow you to get a notification that, hey, that we posted something. So uh, go ahead and do that. And then that way you guys can uh, get uh, subscribed to us and get notifications that we're live. Um, if you guys are crazy for some content, um, we have quite a few webinars and stuff that you can kind of go through. I know that we have probably about nine or 10 webinars for both Flexi uh, and NROUTE, and then we also have uh, webinars that they, they also do in Europe, so we do those as well. So you can see those that are on our website, uh, check those out, and uh, that'll be good. So uh, I think we've uh, got that out of the way. So um, our topic for today um, is going to be HP Printer and Cutter Barcode Workflow. This is, a, this is a good one for all those guys out there who have an HP printer and one of these HP Latex 64 cutters or the 54 cutters. Um, there's a pretty unique workflow that we can do uh, with this. And um, we can uh, do all this within Flexi. Now uh, this, I'm gonna be using Flexi 19 in this case but you guys might be using some other version. Uh, I know this will work with the HP print and cut bundle that comes with, uh, that comes together. Uh, so you will be able to do this with some of your HP uh, branded versions as well. I'm gonna be using 19 just because that's what I have installed on here in order to do that. So why don't we just get started? Let's get started with what is this all about? What are some of the benefits of using this? Um, why, why should we be using these barcodes um, and, and what's the advantages? I don't have a ton of slides for us today, but I just have a few I wanted to kind of get started with. And then, uh, and then we're just gonna jump into a live demo because I think this is the best way that I can kind of show that. So um, the first thing the barcode allows us to do is it, it allows us to avoid confusion between jobs. Um, if you have a lot of different jobs going on in your, uh, uh, in your production manager uh, and whatnot, you may be sending three, four, five different jobs at the same time. And then those jo jobs tend to get piled up inside of the production manager. What this allows us, using these barcodes, what this allows us to do is it actually allows us to avoid any confusion between the jobs because the two jobs are kind of linked together. So when, I, when, the, when the machine reads that barcode, it will actually pull the job that it actually needs to grab. You don't have to click on it to send it. It automatically pulls out that job by itself. So there's no wondering if you have jobs that look similar, 
if you're doing multiple copies and things like that, or if you're doing multiple jobs of the same one, which cut is which one, you don't have to worry about that. So, um, uh, so one of the great things is that also will save us some time. Uh, if you have a setup for, um, you know, maybe it's in a different room or something like that, you're going to constantly be maybe sending the print job, you go into the printer room, you grab it off the printer, put it on the cutter, and you go back to production manager, and then you come back, send the job, and then go back to your cutter again, and make sure that everything's okay there. The nice thing here is we can just send the job to print and cut. The cut job will sit inside of um, inside of our production manager. And then when we go to the cutter, we can just enable the cut to start from the cutter itself. We don't ever actually go, have to go back to the computer, which is really nice. Um, and then there's a little bit of flexibility with loading the media into the cutter and uh, things like that. We can flip it around and you'll kind of see that in some of the pictures that I took from when I was doing some test cuts uh, for the live stream today. And so you can flip it upside down and it doesn't matter because Flexi will know which barcode it's reading and then it'll automatically flip the cut for you. So if there's ever an accident as to which way it came out of the printer, then it doesn't matter. Flexi will fix it for you. And then you can do a continuous cut via barcode. So for example, you could have like five or six print jobs or decal jobs in a row that are gonna be stacked up on top of each other. And maybe these stacks are going to be um, uh, different jobs. And so you'll print one right after another and it just comes out in a big roll. You can put that roll right back on the cutter. And then once you get the first job going, it will pull and finish that first job. And then it actually, when it finishes, it scans the next set of section to see if there's another barcode behind it. And if it is, or if it does find one, it'll automatically read that barcode, pick the job, and then move right into the next cut. So you could do a set it and forget it type workflow where you print out six, seven, eight, nine different cut jobs, put it on the cutter, send it, and the thing will just do what it's supposed to do. So that's, that's kind of another uh, thing to, to, to keep in mind. Also, um, while, we, uh, while we're in this live stream, uh, if you guys have some questions, um, I'll be working with Bennett here to kind of answer some of those questions. If you have any questions about the workflow or anything about Flexi, just fire off. Fire those off in the, in the comment section. Um, looks like we got a question here. Um, are all the bugs fixed with 19 from 12? Um, you know, it just depends on what you're looking at. I know that uh, the last build that we just produced for 19 is probably one of the most stable builds that we've had. So uh, if you have any questions or if you want to get the full uh, detailed list of all the things that were fixed in 19 and things like that, um, you can give our technical support a call. Uh, and they can probably get you a copy of the of the uh, the update list or what's in the uh, the fix list because that's that's in the install of Flexi. So, um, but yeah, a Flexi 19 has a lot of new features in it, a lot of new cool stuff. One of the big things that you'll probably like about Flexi 19 is the new 64-bit rip. So, um, makes things a lot faster when it comes to ripping and things like that. So. Uh, if you have any questions, give our tech support a call. Uh, just so you know, their number is 800-229-9044. Uh, I just want to make sure I got that right there. 800-229-9044. That'll get you directly to tech support. That doesn't go you through our main switch. That just goes right to tech support. So if you have any questions about 19 or, or any issues that you might be having with 12, there might actually already be a fix for it. So go ahead and, and give them a ring and they can get you all that information. So cool, let's, let's, let's jump right into a demo. I think uh, that's gonna be our next thing here. So I'm gonna open up Flexi. Um, and I'm gonna minimize this here. And we're gonna pull up our Flexi software and our production manager. First Flexi. So first thing we wanna do is in our workflow, we wanna set up uh, what a contour cut. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a contour cut. I'm gonna go into, not, I'm not gonna go into too much terrible detail about setting up contour cuts, but um, I'm gonna do a few things to kind of get you into the mode here so you can kind of see 
um, uh, what it is that we're, we're kind of doing. So you can kind of get the feel of, of contour cuts. But the main thing what I want to focus on is going to be the production manager, the tips and tricks on how to use the barcode, how to fix it when it goes wrong, and that kind of thing. But we want to talk about the workflow. So that starts with the contour cut. So I've imported several different things here. Uh, this big image here in the middle, this is our uh, Flexi, our newest version of the, the color chart and color uh, testing. So we use this to uh, test profiles and whatnot. It's got some gradients. It's got just about anything you can think of, RGB, CMYK, you know, different colors for us to be able to test with. And then I brought in this little Sunrise Aviation um, logo. So when you're applying a contour cut, uh, it's kind of important to evaluate um, what you're actually applying the contour cut to. So there's gonna be several different scenarios that you're gonna to have to deal with and kind of determine what's going on. So first of all, let's just take uh, a, an example here. This top aviation uh, logo is a vector file. This is the easiest kind of file to set a contour cut to because um, it knows all the boundaries. And so if I go to my effects menu and click on contour cut, I'm gonna see Design Central pull up here and you can see that right here. And I have my uh, color set to uh, fuchsia, by the way. If you're applying contour cuts, we would highly recommend that you use the, the contour, contour one, two, and three and the perf cut. Uh, because these are the default colors that the software inherently recognizes as the contour cut colors. Now you can use the other colors but if you start to have any problems, we would recommend that you switch to these just in case. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this fuchsia color just because it's really easier for you guys to see that light gray sometimes can be hard to see. So <clears throat> if I wanna apply this, you can see that it goes all the way around all my objects. And if I zoom in here a little bit so you can see that a little better, as I increase or decrease this, it's gonna pull in closer. And I can go all the way to zero or I can even go negative on this um, if I wanna do a, a bleed cut or something like that so it doesn't leave any, uh, any white space. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this at you know, 0.125 for now. And I can hit apply on this. That's gonna be important that you hit the apply button um, so that it doesn't try and uh, uh, if I click away, you'll see that it just disappears. So just be aware of that. That's gonna be your first scenario for an easy contour cut. The next one might be something like what I have here below. Now you may say, well, that looks exactly the same. Well, it almost is. The difference here is that I rasterized this one. So this might be a logo or a business card or something that maybe you got off the internet or from a logo or from a customer and they didn't have the original graphic. Um, this is gonna be a different scenario. So now what happens if I try and apply a contour cut to this? You'll see what happens. If I go to effects again, go to contour cut, I'm gonna get a contour cut around the outside because this is a bitmap. And so what I have to figure out here is how am I gonna make this area transparent? I need to make this white space transparent. So I'm gonna hit escape. I'm not gonna, not gonna apply that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my bitmap like I have it now. I'm gonna to go to my bitmap bar and I'm gonna say make transparent. And I'm gonna get this neat little wand here and I can click on the white space and it's gonna start selecting it. Now, in this case, I don't have any other white inside of this design except for in the middle here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I need to actually highlight this area down below. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key and you notice how you get that little plus icon next to my, oh, I hit it too many times. I do not want to do that. All right, so you hit that shift key and it gives you that little uh, plus. That means I'm gonna to add to my selection. So I'm gonna hit shift, left click, shift, left click. And now I've added these two sections to my selection. And then in my design central, again, design central is gonna be the important thing here. That's where all your, your tools are usually located for different things. I'm gonna hit apply. Now, it doesn't look like it's changed a whole lot, but 
if I click on this icon again, or this image, go to effects and go to contour cut, now it's doing the same thing that I wanted my previous one to do. So you can see here that depending on what you're gonna do might depend on what, you know, what you've got to do ahead of, or what kind of graphic you have will depend on what kind of steps you need to take in order to create a contour cut. So let's zoom back out here a little bit. And this is the one I use this big file here in order to create my printout for the first, uh, first one, because um, I was testing out a profile as well. So I'm going to grab this guy and we're just going to apply a contour cut and move on to the next step. So we're going to go to contour cut. 0.125 seems good to me. I'm gonna say, leave it as a contour and hit apply. So now I'm gonna select this object and I'm gonna to go to my rip and print. You can get to there by clicking this button here, or if you go to the file menu, you can go to rip and print right here. All right, so let's pull this up here and I'm gonna click on selection only, so it only does the selection. And uh, in this video, we're not going to really focus on color correction or alignment or anything like that. Uh, we're going to kind of skip over that. So what I've done is I've set two copies right down below. And one thing that you are going to need to know is that when you print these out, uh, there is a spacing requirement that comes with these. Uh, this is probably something that you're going to want to test a little bit with to make sure you can get the, the, the right uh, spacing. But you're going to want to leave enough space on the right hand side so that your pinch roller and your head don't, don't uh, cause a problem with, with the registration marks being too close to the edge of the material. Typically, this looks like two, two and a half inches or something like that. You might be able to get a little closer depending on where uh, your machine and and whatnot, uh, HP would probably have some better specifications on how close exactly. I always like to give myself two and a half inches just in case, at least. Um, in this case, I just went ahead and centered it. That way I've got plenty of, of material. The other thing that you need to have is you're going to need to have enough space. If this is the only job you're printing and you're not printing multiple copies, you do need to have sufficient space at the back of the print in order to get this to work correctly. If you try and um, uh, skimp out and uh, cut it too short, what ends up happening is, is the machine is not able to pull it in far enough and it errors out because it can't read that barcode. That barcode sticks out a little bit. And so you, you do need to make sure that you put enough space on the back. So if, if you, let's say, do this, and you're running into an error where it reads the first mark and then it gets to the back here and it's having a problem reading this back mark, consider adding a little bit of extra space back there. Maybe as a test, what you could do is you could just tape like another piece in the back and see if, if that fixes it. But just do be aware that some spacing is required here. And so that's, that's just kind of a little tip to make sure that you know you've got it there. So in this case, I'm throwing it right down the middle I'm gonna go ahead and have this hold in list because I don't actually wanna print this again. And I'm gonna to go to my fifth tab. When you have a contour cut, this fifth tab appears. And I'm gonna send it as separate jobs right here at the top. Um, this is important because when I send the job, they need to be generated at the same time because a barcode number gets created when you send the job. And so this is really important to send as separate jobs. You need to send them both at the same time so that they get the correct barcode um, in order to avoid any kind of trouble or issues. Down here below is where we are gonna see our contour cut. Now this is, again, we're not gonna go into super detail about this, but if I double click on this color, I can do multiple things with this. I can set some default settings in terms of if I wanted to kiss cut, or if I wanted to cut through, um, or if I wanted to do a pounce cut, or if I wanted to do a perf cut or something like that, all of these settings would be in here for me. These are default ones that have been provided via HP. And so they're already in here ready to go. And you can click on any one of these and then you can modify them in case your lamination is thicker or your particular media is a little bit thicker or whatever you need to do. 
So these are where those settings are. When you're done setting those settings, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this just to regular kiss cut, you're gonna hit apply and then hit okay. Make sure you don't hit cancel because your, your information will get deleted or it will, it'll just not be accepted. So the, the real kicker is gonna be right in here with the registration marks. We only have in this case one choice because we're running an HP latex printer with an HP latex cutter. Um, and so this option right here is where our, our options are gonna be. So if we click on that little options button, we get this dialog box and it's gonna show you a ton of settings. Mainly what these settings are for is for you to be able to turn on or turn off the barcode. So for example, if I do not want the barcode in this particular job, I may wanna just go with the Opus or the Opus XY or the Opus XY2 marks. Those are just the regular marks. So if I click on that, the regular, the Opus XY2 has the bar, and let's zoom in a little bit here. It has the bar with uh, a SUMA mark, but no barcode. It's just a black bar used for alignment. So if I go to Opus XY and hit OK, then you don't get the barcode at the back. So there's a few little options here. Uh, in this case, we're going to select the HP barcode, um, and I'm going to go ahead and place it on the front and the back. Now, if you do not decide to print the barcode on the back or on the bottom, uh, then what happens is, is you can't flip it around. That's the only disadvantage there. But if you are confident with not needing it, you can always remove it. Then that will save you a little bit of space of material on that back side, a little bit of print media and a little bit of ink. So uh, that might be helpful if you're running them in one big uh, in, in several, you might, you might not want to do that, but I'm going to leave them both on because I want to be able to read them from both sides. So, um, all right. So then we have our typical, uh, you guys have probably seen these before, our typical settings for mark size, you know, distance between marks and things like that. I'm going to leave those at the default because they're sufficient for me and for this print. So know that those are there. I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit send. And this is gonna go right over to the cutter. And we're actually gonna now start to get into what are some of the tips and tricks on this and, and what do we need to do in order to, to make sure everything works properly. So I'm gonna to go to production manager here. I'm gonna click on my latex 335. And uh, here's my print job. This will have gone to the printer and started printing already. And uh, in fact, I've got some images here. So I actually printed this one out and this is what it looks like. So you're gonna get this barcode with the yellow background and this is all just for visibility mainly so that the sensor can tell the difference between the material and the barcode. And then you're gonna get these four little marks. Those are your, those are your opus marks. Uh, so it has to read both sets of marks. So when you print this out, do make sure that the barcode is clear, it is crisp and that all registration marks are clear. You do not want smudges or anything on this because if it is smudged or something happens to it, the printer or the cutter, sorry, will have a problem later on down the road uh, with some of those, those things. So uh, that's, that's, a, that's a little example of what it should look like when it comes to print out. Um, loading it onto the material, onto the machine. Uh, this, uh, this I, I included two pictures here. You can see here that this picture has the little four dots. And then the next picture I have in this one is the four dots are actually in the background. This is actually flipped around. So actually when I cut this out this morning, I actually stuck it in one way, uh, the original way that it came out of the printer, but then I decided to actually reverse it to stick it in the backwards way and it still has the barcode. So it has it on both sides and the barcode is slightly different from the top and the bottom. So it knows when it reaches the, this barcode, if it's read the top one or the bottom one. And when it reads it, it just says, okay, well, I've read the bottom one. I actually need to flip it. So it flips the contour cut for you. Really, really convenient. You don't have to remember which way you, you, it came out of the printer. You can just stick it in whichever way and it'll figure it out on its own. There are a couple key things that we really wanna focus on here in Production Manager. So the workflow of this 
is a little bit different than your typical cutter. So you're not going to necessarily just go into the uh, um, you're not going to just go into the software, click on the cutter, grab this, and hit send. In fact, that's completely the opposite way that you want to do that. You do not want to click on the job and just hit send. You initiate the cut job from the cutter itself, or you will need to click on the cutter and select this option right here, start reading barcode on cutter. If you select this job and just hit send, what it does is it actually completely ignores the barcode and it tries to read the, the opus marks. In, in, in actuality, it may actually read those marks, but the typical thing that we found is that if you don't read the, if you just hit send and it doesn't read the barcode, your cut is slightly off. And so make sure you don't hit that just send button. Unless you're using a print job that doesn't have the barcode. If you're not using the barcode, then hit send away. It's not a big deal. It's only if you're using the barcode, then that's going to be a no-no. Do not hit that send button. So we've got our print out. We put it on the cutter. It's ready to go. What are some of the things we need to look for? Well, the first thing that you need to look for in order for and, and actually, let me explain how or what's happening in the background. So when we request from the cutter, let's say that we're initiating the, the job from the cutter. We're actually going to go to the cutter and say, hey, look for the barcode. What happens there is when it actually reads the barcode, it sends a message to production manager and says, hey, I have a job here that's barcode number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you have a job like that? And it says, yeah, actually I do, here. And then it grabs it and sends it to the cutter and then the cutter executes that command. So that's, there's a level of communication that happens between there. In fact, there's a little server that we call the barcode server. And that server communicates with your latex cutter. It's really important that those work. If it doesn't work, this whole thing falls apart. So it's important that you guys uh, make sure it's working. The way you can check is down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna minim, I'm gonna see here. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna do this and kind of highlight this here so you can kind of see it. I know it's at the bottom of my screen, so it might be hard to see. Right here is this barcode server. It says barcode server is on. That's what you want to see. If you do not see this, we have a communication problem. So the first thing that you want to do then is go to your cutter, go to the second tab here, and then just say stop or restart the barcode server. If it's off, so for example, if you see barcode server is off, then that means if you come in here, then you can click on the option that says start the barcode server. So something might have turned it off, something might have happened, it got turned off. If you see it off, just come in here, make sure the barcode server is on. If you have some other problems, make sure that uh, check your firewall and your antivirus software um, and other things. Make sure that nothing is blocking that communication. That's a, it's an important communication. And if you need help with that particular process, like I said, I mentioned tech support's number 800-229-9044. Those guys can help you get work through that. There could be an antivirus, it could be a firewall, could be some other application, maybe that's causing an issue, uh, maybe a corrupted preference file, something like that could be up. So know that if you can't get that going, give us a ring, we can help you get that going because that's kind of an important part before you start sending a job. So now that we've got our barcode server on, that's a, that's a key one right there is making sure it's on. Now that it's on, we're pretty much set to go. Um, what we would recommend is that, uh, that your computer, that your printer, and that your cutter are not connected over Wi-Fi. So that's, that's going to be an important one. I think HP will probably tell you this too, but Wi-Fi is not a good idea. So you want to make sure that your laptop is hooked up to Ethernet, make sure the printer and the cutter are connected up to Ethernet, or make sure that your cutter is connected on USB. But make sure that nothing is communicating over Wi-Fi. That will also cause some problems. Okay. So let's, let's actually get to sending the job. There's two ways to send the job. The first way is to come in here 
and say, start reading barcode on cutter. If you click on that, it sends a message to your cutter and the cutter activates and says, hey, I'm ready. Go ahead and move the head to the position of where it needs to be. So your cutter is not going to start cutting right away. It actually prompts you to move the head first. So you're going to go to your cutter and start doing that. What I would recommend, and the nice thing about this is that you don't have to come back to the production manager. So this is an option that you can use, but the ideal option is just to go straight into uh, your cutter and do it from there. And I've got a few more images that should help us uh, with that. Also, I just wanted to kind of give you just a quick preview here of this, of this image again. Notice how I have plenty of space in the front. Now this is probably, a, a, in fact, I'll tell you it's a little excessive, um, but the, the reality is our printer has an issue where it, it tends to jam if you don't feed a bunch of material through it. So um, I went ahead and just fed a bunch, but make sure that there is a, a good amount of material out front here so that there's enough for the material to grab onto and, and there's enough room. So three, four inches should, should be sufficient. Um, and, and again, you could probably test a little bit to see how close you can get that. Um, Uh, question, uh, David Witten says, can the cutter be connected via USB if the latex printer is connected via ethernet? Uh, yeah, you can, you can mix the two, right. Um, so if your printer, well, your HP latex printer is always going to be connected via ethernet um, IP address. So that's going to be a given, but your, your cutter can be ethernet or USB. It can be both. So, or either one. So yeah, it's a good question. Yep, you can, you can do either one, one or the other, whichever, whichever kind of works best for you. Um, I know that sometimes it's not always easy to get a, a USB cable somewhere or, a, or maybe you don't have enough jacks in the ethernet. So um, yeah, either one of those will work. Great question. Um, oh, and so, okay, so continuing on here, what I wanted to look at is just make sure you have enough space. That's kind of all I'm really pointing at here. You've got to have enough space in between these pinch rollers and here. Now, like I said, this is kind of excessive. I'm going overboard with my example here, but you, that can cause issues with reading these barcodes. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you give yourself, you know, ample amount of space, not trying to hug the material like a half an inch on the edge. That, that's just not going to work. So give yourself some space. So let's move on to the next one. And this one is upside down. Let's flip that around. There we go. Okay, so now this machine here was a sample machine that we got. So the buttons are gonna look a little bit different. So I do apologize about that. This button here is the only one that's gonna be different. This one, instead of saying test, is actually gonna have the image of a barcode. Um, so you'll have just like a little barcode image. So that's the button that you're gonna to wanna to click. So to initiate the job, what I've done is I've loaded up the material I've gotten the job ready and I hit that test button. I hit that test button and it says, I should have a picture of this. Oh, I don't. Please tell me I have a picture of that. Okay, here we go. Um, it's gonna say set the tool onto the barcode. Um, so at this point, you're actually gonna go and grab, use these arrows to move that head over to the barcode. And I'm gonna show you where to position that. And that's actually what these two other pictures were about here. Um, here we go. So, uh, let's see, yeah, that's the one I want. Okay, so here is where you wanna mount that, that, uh, that particular sensor. This is about an inch and a half, and half an inch to an inch and a half away from the bottom of that barcode. It can be anywhere along here, uh, as long as it's under the yellow part. Um, and as long as it's about an inch, a half an inch to an inch and a half or so underneath uh, that barcode. Uh, this is important. You do not want to put it on top or above. Um, if you put it too far down, uh, what ends up happening is it doesn't think there's anything there and it takes longer to read or airs out. Um, so just make sure it's, it's within reason. Like I said, half an inch to an inch and a half should be sufficient just below, uh, should work great. 
so that's how you're going to set that up. Um, in case there's any confusion there, because that can be a little, little bit confusing there. Um, this is what that barcode kind of close up looks like. Um, it's going to read this barcode first, and then afterwards, it's going to it's going to read this. So one of the things, and I'll actually show you a video of this at the very end here. I'm going to show you a little clip of what I recorded. But the first thing it does is once you hit that scan, you do have to hit enter a couple times. So you hit the barcode button, you move it under the, the barcode, and then you get to the point where uh, you have to hit enter to accept it, um, things like that. And then once you hit enter, I think it's like twice, once or twice, then it says, okay, I'm ready. And then it starts scooching up and it starts reading this barcode. And it does some antics back and forth it will fly across, then come back and fly across again, then come back and then read it and then scooch all the way across the barcode. And then once it's done, it will actually pause for an eerie amount of time. You think it's stopped, but what it's actually doing is actually read, it's read the barcode, it sent the message to production manager and it's waiting for a response back. And so it's like, I don't know, it's like, it seems like an eternity to me. <laughs> you're looking at it and you're like, it's probably like 10 seconds or less, maybe five seconds, but you're looking at it and it stops. And it just sits there and sits there and sits there and then it starts. That's normal. It's just communicating with production manager. It's actually pulling the job from the production manager and loading into the memory of the machine. So don't worry. Now, if it sits there for more than a minute or 30 seconds, you probably got a communication problem. Then we got something else going on, whether it could read the barcode or something like that. Those of you guys who are going to be doing lamination, you know, you might need to check with HP on this, but you might be able to adjust the sensitivity of the eye so that it kind of helps with the reflection. Although I have to say that this barcode usually does a pretty good job with that yellow and uh, black background, it usually does a pretty good job. So let's, let's take a look at another image we got here. So again, this would be an, uh, a good picture of the incorrect way to put this in. You want it below, not on top of it. Also, don't put it over here. Don't put it next to this registration mark. That's not going to work either. Uh, it needs to be uh, down below the barcode uh, in this area somewhere over here. Okay. Before we move on to the next section, it looks like we got a good question here. Uh, Amanda says, does this work with Roland Eco Solvent as well? We use Flexi with VersaWorks. Um, it's not gonna work with the Roland Cutter. So this is actually a feature that is very specifically uh, tailored to the HP Latex Cutters and the Suma Cutters. Now, uh, I didn't, I'm not going to include the Suma cutter necessarily in this presentation, but um, if you have a Suma cutter, they do a very similar thing. In fact, it, it basically does the, the, the same thing. And so you can, um, the, the Suma cutters look different and they, they work a little bit differently. So that's why I'm not going to really go into that one because there's, there's a whole nother, uh, it, it, it functions similarly. There's just a lot of different buttons that you need to click. So if you have a Suma cutter, uh, and then you have a different type of printer, it doesn't have to be an HP, then you can do this. Um, this particular instance, we're just using the, the, the HP printer and the HP cutter. But again, if you had a Roland printer and a Suma cutter, you could theoretically, you could do this because they do support the barcode system uh, as well. So good question. Um, uh, Dean says, uh, another good question. Has the barcode changed appearance since the last update? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I do know that if we go back here, let me show you something. If you go back to the uh, rip and print screen, uh, one of the things that you can do under this barcode settings is you can actually set the background color to gray. So I don't know if maybe that's what you've seen is the gray and black. Um, this obviously is another setting to help you deal with issues where 
maybe the color is, uh, maybe we're having problems with reflections and stuff like that with uh, the light or the material, or maybe you're cutting through that uh, laminate and you're having a hard time reading it, the gray would be there. Um, it's actually been a while since I've printed uh, this out in an older version, like version 12 or, or one of those versions. So it's possible that one of the versions of 12 didn't have the yellow background, but honestly, I can't remember. I'd have to, I'd have to double check. But um, either way, uh, it should work. It should work the same. Um, whether it has that background or not, it should. The yellow is just basically there for contrast, mainly more than anything else. Um, so it has a better time reading it. Um, okay, so uh, now that we've now that we've got the machine running, uh, we um, we've read the barcode. It's starting to read it. You're going to wait that two three seconds it takes to communicate. Then it's going to start reading these four little little suma marks, and it's going to read this one. It'll read the back one. It's going to come over here to the, to the left, read this one, and then read this one, and then it'll start cutting. Then immediately after that, once it's done with the cut, at the very back end, it's going to start scooching forward and it's going to start looking for the next barcode. Now, if you don't have another barcode, it's still going to do that. It'll just look back there and then realize there's not one. I think it goes I don't know, maybe six inches or less. I don't know, it, it, or to the edge of the material, whatever that number is, it goes a little ways. And if it doesn't find anything, it just times out and says, okay, I'm done. Um, so that's why the, if you are doing multiple jobs in a row, you probably want those spaced fairly close together so that you don't have this like big, huge gap in between um, because that'll cause it longer to print. Obviously there's savings in material there too. You don't, you don't want to waste all that. So you'd want to crunch those together as close as possible anyway, but uh, that'll help read it quicker. But, and then that's, that's it, you're done. So the process is fairly simple. And, and let me just recap before we watch this video. You're gonna go in, assign your contour cut. You're gonna send it through production manager. You're gonna get it, you're gonna see both jobs. Your print job is gonna go printing right away. You're gonna take that off once it's done. Let that dry, let that cure, whatever you need to do there. Pull that off, stick it on the cutter. If you have bar cards on both sides, doesn't matter which way you put it in, backwards or forwards, stick it on there. Make sure that your clamps are down, make sure that your, your uh, pinch rollers on the right and the left, you got enough space. Make sure you have enough space at the back. And then uh, set the origin. So you, you get the machine ready. And then just click on that little barcode button. It's going to say, place the machine underneath the barcode. Use the arrows, scoot yourself on it right underneath here. Get that thing close. Hit OK. Hit Enter a couple times. And then it's going to start reading that barcode. It's going to go fly across back and forth a couple times, read the barcode. And it's going to stop right here in this corner, wait for production manager to respond with the job. And once it has, boom, it's going to go. And it's going to start reading these, these marks and start cutting along. So, uh, and then you're done. And that's it on the barcode. The really nice thing is about this is it makes that part super simple. This is really easy to set up uh, and, and uh, not that bad. One other thing that I'm going to show you guys real quick. And I think most of you guys probably do this anyway, because it's kind of annoying when you send a cut job and it just disappears. But one of the things I like to do is that every time you send a job, be aware that the barcode number can change. And so you want to make sure that you keep sending the same job. Uh, you won't uh, want to uh, resend the cut job again because a new barcode number will get created and then it's not going to match up with your print. So how do we handle that then? Actually, if you go into your production manager and you can, you can do this for your printer and your cutter as well, Click on the cutter. If I click on this little down arrow and I go to default job properties, and then I click on the second tab, which is the workflow tab. By default, it's set after output is to delete. I can set it to hold so that no matter what happens, any job that I send, let's say I send the job and it errors out and it doesn't communicate properly or something like that. 
production manager won't delete the job on me. And then I can just go ahead and just try it again multiple times without having to worry about production manager, you know, uh, deleting the job on me. So that's, that's going to be an important one for you guys as well. So just kind of make note of that. And I would just go in there and do that if you're running one of these setups. So um, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we've got a couple more questions coming in. I'm actually going to switch to the video real quick. I just want to give you guys an idea of what this looks like, what to kind of expect. Um, and then we can, we can address some of the questions and see if, see if what else we got. So hopefully this will play. Okay, let's scooch it all the way back to the beginning here. So at the beginning here, I did have to, I started recording and then I forgot that I didn't hit the enter button. So um, go ahead and hit play. So you can see here, it's waiting for me to hit enter and I'm just staring at it dumbfoundedly, can't figure out what's going on. There it goes. So it's resetting itself and then now it's gonna read the barcode. Like I said, it's gonna do its thing for a minute here. And then it stops for a second, and then you can kind of see that it that it's now it's reading the bar, it's reading the the suma marks, and it's going to start cutting here in a second. I know the audio is a little bit off. I think it's just because we're doing a live stream here, and it's uh, the sound on the video is not quite evened up. But but you can now see that it's now going through here, and it's cutting um, these uh, contour cuts for me. And I also wanted to kind of let it go because at the very end here, it shows you what happens when it's looking for the next barcode. Okay, so it's done. It's reset itself. And now it's going to go into searching for the next barcode. And it'll do this for a little while until it gets to the end. And then it's done. So there you go. That's kind of the, the basic setting there and what it does. So you can kind of get an idea of what happens there. So, um, Okay, so we got a few questions here. Um, question from Born Broken. Um, will this work on longer print images, meaning will Suma add more points so it cuts straight? I do a lot of long print job cuts, some close to 20 feet. Yeah, you know what? Um, that is what, um, let's go back to Flexi here to answer that question. That's a good question, by the way. Um, thanks for that. Um, go into production manager, or sorry, your rip and print here. And when we click on this tab and we click on options, um, this right here, uh, let me look here. Okay, maximum distance between marks. So right now it's set to 15 inches. So every 15 inches, it's gonna set one of those little black square marks. And so uh, that's what's gonna allow it to, uh, it's gonna read those marks as it goes along as it needs to. Uh, so that it keeps the thing straight. So yeah, uh, that's a good question. Now you can increase this if you want to. I don't know what the maximum is on this. Looks like 19. Okay, so it looks like 19 is the max and the lowest you can go is 1.18 1, 1 inches, which seems a little ridiculous. But um, so about 15 is the normal, but you can go all the way up to 19 inches per set of marks. So if you're doing a long job like that, that's, that's, a, that's a good way to handle that. Uh, let's see. So Harp has a question. Uh, Pertain to when you made the sunrise JPEG with uh, white areas transparent. When I print layouts with transparent images like PNG files, the colors change when I print the designs. Okay, so that could be uh, several things. Um, uh, it depends on what version of, of uh, the software you're running. If you're running run, uh, 19, um, we may want to uh, uh, take a look at that a little closer. I do know that they addressed a bunch of issues with uh, print colors and a bunch of stuff in the latest update that just came out. Um, or yes, it, it just came out like a week or I want to say maybe a week ago. I'll have to check with tech support. Um, unfortunately, I'm the only one here in the office. Everybody else is, is working from home. So um, 
but uh, so I, I'm not able to follow up with it as, as well. But I, I believe it was last week they started rolling those out. So you might actually see a new version of the 19 software coming out uh, pretty soon. So if you are using 19, I would check to see if you have the latest version. Um, the other thing that you could check is make sure I'm not 100% certain on this one, but uh, you may want to check to make sure that the, uh, the rendering intents are set correctly for both bitmaps and vectors. That might play a little bit of a role in that. I, I think your best bet is, um, obviously I can't really see the file or anything that you're looking at, but my probably best recommendation is call tech support uh, and then let them know what's going on. If there's a new version out there for you, they can check that for you and they can, they can get that resolved. And if it is an issue, they, I think we, we could probably get our work around. But I think uh, there might be just an issue with the color setting there that we may need to change or adjust, or uh, it, maybe the update could help that as well. So um, good question. Um, okay, so Kevin says, in order to run a job or yeah, okay, in order to run a job after a job, if you start your next job four inches overlapping the previous print, the HP will leave about two inches between the jobs, so you won't actually wait extra material. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, the, yeah, that is correct. You can get those pretty close. Like I said, what it's the, it's only if you're doing a single job where you have to leave a little extra space at the end uh, just because it's got to have enough room to pull that material far enough forward so that it doesn't come off the rollers. And I, I believe that there's a little sensor on the back and what, when it tells it when the media is no longer there or something. Anyway, regardless, the problem is your scanner is in the front and your, um, your material needs to have enough space to be able to reach all the way to the front so that it can scan the barcode and have enough space there without falling off. So, but yes, you can get those pretty close. Uh, you can get them really, really close so you don't waste a ton of material. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. Uh... Let's see here, Harp says, can you apply the hold as default for all cut files and not assign it for each cut file? Um, yes, that actually, that setting. So um, that's a good question. So when I, when I come in here and I set this default job properties, this is going to do, this is going to apply this setting for any new job that gets applied into production manager. Now, the bummer is, is that I kind of show you, showed you this after. So if I were to send this job that's sitting here right now, technically that job was sent to production manager before I changed that setting. And so it would actually get deleted. So you would wanna make sure, change the setting before you send the jobs over, or if you have a bunch of jobs in your queue already, um, those jobs, you just have to make sure they will not have that new setting. So once you check that option in the default job properties, any new job that comes into production manager will be held to that standard from there on out. So that'll, that'll cover you that way. So as long as you do that, any new job, you don't have to do that for every single one, but good question. Uh, looks like we got a question from time to make something. Uh, why do colors sometimes shift in Flexi when you import a file? They tend to print the correct color, but the screen is way off. Okay, that's actually a good question. So that kind of goes back to our color trilogy uh, episodes that we've done the last three or four weeks or so. Um, I think it was last week, and then we took a break for a week, and then two before that. So if you go on our YouTube channel, we have a whole series on color. But what can happen is if you, say, are designing a file in Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that, and you save it as a PDF, you might think, oh, well, you know, when I open up into Flexi, it should be fine. Well, this is where you may want to adjust your, uh, your, your color settings. So if you go to your edit menu, and click on color settings, you've got several different settings here that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that uh, are set the same as the design application that that file pulled in. So for example, you wanna make sure that your monitor profile, 
uh, is the same as the one that they or you know, your mod of profile is set. And then not only that, you also want to make sure that you are using the same input profile. And this is probably more important than the mod, the display settings, although the display settings is important, but the input profile is what really changes color. And so what might happen is they may be using uh, another version of the CMYK import filter. Maybe they're using, and you know, we could just say, uh, maybe they're using Web Uncoded 2 or, or maybe they're using the swap version uh, created. Uh, you would want to make sure that you match your, your grayscale, your CMYK, and your RGB colors to the same as your workspace over in Illustrator or in Photoshop so that your colors don't shift when you open them. That's most likely the issue. Uh, if you keep still having troubles with it after you match those settings up, which by the way, I know for a fact that Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop have these settings in there. I'm not exactly sure where they're at, but you can go in there and find out what the default workspace is. And then you can um, make sure that Flexi matches Illustrator so that you're using the same settings. The other thing that could happen is there's this option here for use embedded ICC profile. If you're getting a, a file from a customer uh, that created it for you, uh, that, that file may actually have an ICC profile attached to it. Uh, this is kind of up to you whether you want to use the embedded ICC profile that was given to you or that's located in the file, or if you turn this option off, you can completely disregard that ICC profile and use the ICC profile inside your input settings. So uh, that's, uh, that's a good question. I would check those settings first to see if that's gonna fix it. If that doesn't fix it, or if you still have trouble, I would say, let's get, let's get on tech support and see if we can figure out what might be happening there. But I, I would almost guarantee that at least this might be a partial, uh, a partial contributor to that, that problem. All right, it looks like, uh, man, we had a lot of interaction today. That's really great, guys. Uh, hopefully uh, that you guys found this useful and helpful. Um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna sign off here. So uh, hope you guys have a good week. Remember, if you guys wanna get notified about this kind of stuff, we do this every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. If you wanna go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, we have a ton of content out there. In fact, if you want to binge watch uh, webinars, we've got playlists of webinars for, for Flexi, for Enroute, um, uh, for a ton of stuff. We're always adding new content. So check out our channel, subscribe if you want to. And then if you hit that notification bell, it'll let you know when we're live if you want a notification that we're live. So uh, check our Facebook page. We always post a topic on Facebook as what we're doing next. Um, so, uh, Glad you guys were able to join us. I uh, had a great time. Lots of great questions. Thank you for that. If you guys have any questions and we didn't get to them or, or you're seeing this video late, maybe you're not seeing it live, go ahead and post those comments in the que or those questions in the comments and we'll actually see if we can pull some of those questions in for next week and we'll address those at the beginning of next stream. So uh, glad you guys were able to join us. You guys have a great week and uh, be safe. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining.